this is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. The Communist objective is control. Control of everything and everybody and by any means. In a moment, you will see a basic step in the direction of world domination. Philbrick, Herbert Philbrick. That's no you. According to the paper, you've got a vacant lot for sale. Putting it mildly, Mr. Philbrick, I've got dozens of vacant lots for sale. Well, would you like to show me some? I sure would. Excuse me a moment, I'll get my car. Well, wait a minute. Why don't we take mine? Then I won't feel guilty if I don't buy anything. Fine. Suits me. persecution and the nation of full stomachs, our task is difficult. What are we going to do about it? We're going to close communist headquarters as such, but we'll soon be in business again in an entirely new and undercover manner. Now, do you own any property? Well, I did buy a house recently. I own a small portion of it. Do you belong to the Taxpayers' Alliance? No. Well, then join it. The Taxpayers' Alliance is a, an organization of landlords. It's a right-wing reactionary group. That's right. No, you can't come here. I told you it's impossible. I'll meet you at the usual place. How do you do? How do you do? May I help you? Yes, I'm interested in the work being done by the uh, Taxpayers Alliance. Well, that's always nice to hear. I wondered how one goes about joining. Uh, do you own property? Yes, I do. Then we'd be happy to have you. Here's an application and a copy of our Constitution and bylaws. You may fill the application out here if you like. Well, I'm in a bit of a rush right now. Could I do it at home and come by tomorrow? Oh, yes, of course. We'll still be here. Fine. Thank you. sort of a toothache. I thought maybe you better take a look at it before it gets any worse. All right. How about two o'clock at the office? Fine. I'll be there. This is Andrews. Clear the dental office for a two o'clock contact with Philbrick. the Communist Party is about to infiltrate the Taxpayers' Alliance. At least I've gotten orders to apply for a membership. Uh, that's an ambitious program. Taxpayers' Alliance is an old and highly respected civic group. I know. Well, the only function of the Taxpayers' Alliance is to protect the taxpayer and try to see that he gets a square deal. That's right. Well, now, don't tell me the party has a plan to reduce taxes. Uh, there's more. Uh -huh. I'm listening. Seems that Communist Party headquarters is going underground. Oh? 
I tried to get more information out of Comrade Farrow, but uh, he climbed up on me. Uh, Comrade Farrow? Yeah, he's a he's a real estate dealer over on the north side. I don't recall the name. Uh, do we know him? No, probably not. You see, this uh, this operation is to be in the hands of fractions. You know, the people that have never been identified with the Communist mm. Party. Uh, sounds like a rough assignment, even for the commies. Well, they'll try and infiltrate anything. Well, what happens now? I'm supposed to get in touch with Farrell again after I've got my membership. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. We'll see you then. Right. Let me check and see if you're in the clear. It's okay, Herb. I've just been informed that I'm now a member in good standing of the Taxpayers' Alliance. Well, good. I've also been studying their bylaws. Because our first point of attack will be Section 6, Article 2. 6. 2. At all business meetings, 40% of the entire membership will constitute a quorum. That's the one. Tonight, I'm going to move that that bylaw be changed so that any number of members present constitute a quorum. Your job is to talk for my motion after I've made it. All right, I'll do my best. We've given the people of America a fair chance to accept communism peaceably. For the most part, it's been rejected. Now we're going to force it on them. And after much thought and consideration, I should like to offer the following amendment to our bylaws. Resolved that Article 6, Section 2 be amended as follows. Strike out 40% of the entire membership and substitute the members present. The bylaw will then read, at all business meetings, the members present shall constitute a quorum. Thank you, Mr. President. You've heard the resolution offered by Mr. Ames. Is there a second? I second. It's been moved and seconded. Article 6, Section 2 of our bylaws be amended to read as follows. At all business meetings, the members present shall constitute a quorum. Any discussion? Yes. Fellow members, we are not a social organization. We are here to perform a civic duty. And we are here because we stand for 100% Americanism and democracy. We must not be prevented from doing our duty by the apathy of others. For that reason, we must carry on our meetings in a purely democratic way. There is nothing democratic about this resolution. Majority rule is the watchword of America. Mr. Ames speaks about the apathy of others. This may be true, but you can't heal apathy by making it legal. We should work on our indifferent members and not our bylaws. Now, we recognize the right of anyone to sit at home by the fire and rest his or her weary bones. But we don't recognize the right of those people to act as stumbling blocks to those of us who are willing to give our time and our effort for the benefit of the entire community. The chair reminds you that it requires a three-quarter majority of members present to change a bylaw. Are you ready for the question? Question. Question. All those in favor of adopting this resolution will say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it. The motion's carried. The members present will constitute a quorum and business will be conducted accordingly. secret room, Philbrick, but the same old Communist Party. What are they really after now? That's the question. Uh, get a report off to the FBI. The annual election of officers of the Taxpayers' Alliance will be held tomorrow night. 
I've been ordered to report to the real estate office at 5 o'clock tomorrow for final instructions. Hello. Right on time, I see. Yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Philbrick, uh, have you met our secretary treasurer, Mrs. Lucille Oliver? Well, only in an official capacity. I took Mr. Philbrick's application. Herb, uh, can we take a short trip in your car? Yeah, by all means. Where to? Uh, Mrs. Oliver will show you. She's a very efficient secretary. I'm sure of that. Well, if you'll just uh, show me where to go. Just drive. I'll direct you. What goes here? Why is the secretary of the Taxpayers Alliance hanging around with Comrade Farrell? Or is she a party member? Watch yourself, Philbrick. Come in. Come in. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad you've come. I've just finished. It, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> it looks just like it did when I brought it in here. Well, of course it does. That's the artistry of it. But inside, I tell you, it's a masterpiece. This is the same box they have been using for years. No one will suspect. Now, let me show you. You see? It's empty. Now watch. Watch very carefully. Watch. Open it. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. No one will ever know. It's terrific. That should do it, shouldn't it, Comrade? Yes, it's, uh, it's a great trick when you know the magic words. Comrade Felix will teach them to you, because you're going to operate it at the meeting tonight. I am? Oh, That's it's right. beautiful. It's beautiful. There's nothing startling about it. The false bottom covers over the real votes that have been cast. The upper level is filled with prepared votes, which the teller counts. It's a very old trick being put to a worthy purpose. Did you bring the ballots? Yes. Well, let's get on with the election. We have time is running short. Get those other papers out. Are uh, the ballots ready? Yes. Loyal party members were called in to help on it. No two ballots are in the same handwriting or written with the same pen or pencil. There's just one thing I don't understand about this. What's that? Well, I can see how we're going to elect Comrade Farrell president with this gimmick, but how are we going to choose our own vice president? We don't. We don't? No. Our vice president is of the membership's choosing. He will be our out if anything goes wrong. That's the pattern of the Communist Party. When you're doing something crooked, have an innocent party around and be ready to blame it on him. It's a good stunt when it works. And so our new president, elected to serve for one year, is Mr. Farrell Ames. President Ames, would you like to say a few words? can say is that I'm surprised and overwhelmed at the trust and the honor you've bestowed upon me, and that I should do my best to be worthy and to carry on the business of the Taxpayers' Alliance in the true American tradition. Well, how do you feel, Mr. President? Fine. Oh, by the way, I'm appointing you public relations counsel for the Alliance. Well, that sounds very flattering. And I'm calling a meeting of the officers for tomorrow night. I'd like to have you attend. What time? Eight o'clock. I'll be there. And uh, thanks for the invitation. Oh, hello, Comrade Herb. Come in. And sit down. We'll get to business. What about the new vice president? We've talked on the telephone. Our new vice president is going out of town, and leaving everything in my hands. So the first order of business will be a message from Comrade Lucille. I talked with our district leader this morning and informed him of the progress being made by the Taxpayers' Alliance. He is very pleased. He urges that we continue in the direction of democratic centralism. In other words, minority control. Exactly. Control of every organization, civic, political, and industrial. Wow. It's a big job. We're really going to have to work. Nothing's impossible, comrade. Over one-third of the world's population is now under the control of 14 men. Yeah, I know, but to take over industry... The American businessman's a pretty smart cookie. We know. And therefore, the first definite step in the minority control of the politics of the city has been placed in our hands. This is the way they ride in, on the wings of apathy. The willingness to let the other fellow do the work Right now, apathy is public enemy number one. 
It's only a short jump from apathy to slavery. There will be a special meeting of the membership on Saturday night at 8 o'clock to consider matters of importance. A meeting on Saturday night? What's the matter with that guy? Is he nuts? Saturday night? It's ridiculous. There are better things to do on Saturday night than go to a taxpayer's meeting. Well, I'm sorry to see so few of us here tonight. But fortunately, the members present constitute a quorum, and we may proceed with the business at hand. I believe that uh, Mrs. Oliver has a resolution to offer. Mr. President? Mrs. Oliver. The following resolution is of the utmost importance to this organization. Resolved that the taxpayers allowed support the candidacy of Frederick Braxton for Councilman of the 14th District. Mr. President, since when has this become a political organization? You're out of order, sir. Is there a second to the resolution you've just heard? Second. It's been moved and seconded that the taxpayers alliance support the candidacy of Frederick Braxton for Councilman. Is there any discussion? Mr. President? Mrs. Albert? It is because we believe and will fight for a strong America that we are gathered here this evening. This is and what you're fighting, Philbrick, the America. creature that screams patriotism to your face and holds the dagger of communism ready to strike it into your back. You've got to find some way to break this thing up. That's why I say this organization must support Mr. Braxton. Thank you, Mr. President. All those in favor of the resolution, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, nay. Nay. Motion carried. Taxpayers Alliance will support Mr. Braxton, and Mr. Braxton will be so advised. And even with the four hand-picked votes among the few who were there, the motion didn't get a majority. How come it passed? Farrell rammed it through. Didn't take account, just a voice vote. Everybody was so anxious to get home, they didn't bother to question it. What do you know about this Frederick Braxton? Not a thing. Never been identified with the party. Any idea how Carmen Lucille got her job? Yeah. She was appointed by the last president at the suggestion of Farrell. You know, it's that kind of a job with no money, all work, sort of thing that the average American isn't interested in, but the communist is anything to get on the inside. Sure, that's the way they operate. Well, what are we going to do about Lucille and Farrell and their trick ballot box? Nothing. Without your testimony, we can't expose you. How about this? These are copies of two letters that I was ordered to write. This first one goes to all members of the Taxpayers' Alliance. At a special meeting of the membership held Saturday evening, it was voted to support the candidacy of Frederick Braxton for Councilman of the 14th District. You are urged to do all your inner power to further his interest. Well, there's nothing wrong here. No. How about this one, then? This one goes to all known communists in the area. You will publicly announce yourself as opposed to the election of Frederick Braxton and loudly declare you are for his opponent. Be obnoxious about it, make speeches, write letters, talk to people about your political affiliations. Well, well it's vicious, of course, but it's not illegal. You see, the comrades know that their public opposition to a candidate will go a long way towards electing him. And these two letters put the full power of a, of a respectable civic organization behind the campaign of a communist. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe we can think of something to break this up. Mm. Well, I gotta run. Comrade Lucille wants to see me at 2 o'clock, and she does not like to be kept waiting. I'll see you. Come in, comrade. You're just in time. Oh, time for what? To proofread these two letters before we mail them. I think they're all right, but Comrade Farrell wants you to check them. Well, I suppose that's wise. We can't take too many precautions. Now, these are the letters which go to the taxpayers' allowance. The envelopes are all addressed. These are the letters which go to the party members. Good. The girls will be back presently to seal and mail them.
the letters all right? Yes, they seem to be fine. Then the girls can go ahead with the ceiling, then. Now, Philbrick, if you can keep Comrade Lucille occupied until those letters are sealed, you're all right. Uh, I, I wonder if, uh, if I could use your typewriter for a minute. I'm, I'm doing an article on Mr. Braxton. Yes, go ahead. Thanks. I wonder if you'd come here for a minute. Uh, just a minute, Herb. We've got to get these letters in the mail. Well, this will only take a second, and it's important, too. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, all right. What is it? Read this first sentence here. As you can see, it's about Mr. Braxton, and I need some background on his family life. I'm afraid I can't help you. Well, uh, is he married or not? Do you know that? He's married. Children? Oh, I don't know. What difference does it make? Well, if he's a family man, we should use that to our advantage. Why don't you contact Farrell for the information you want? I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I will. Uh, as long as I'm here, why don't I take my letter along? Save us a stamp, huh? Here we are. Well. Anything else I can do for you? No, thanks, Herb. The girls can get these to the post office. Well, then I guess I'll mosey along. See ya. There'll be some explaining to do when these letters are delivered. And your letters got to be your alibi. Take a walk, Philbrick. Be sure they're in the hands of the United States mail before you make a move. The letters will be safely mailed by this time. Now let's go upstairs and spoil Comrade Lucille's day. What's this all about? I opened my letter on the way home, and it's one of those that's supposed to go to the communists. There must be some mistake. Your name's not on the known list of comrades. Well, of course it's not. But somebody's... I heard got the wrong letter. Don't think all those letters were put in the wrong envelopes, do you? Boy, if they were, we're really ruined. Why well, can't be. That would mean disaster. Where are the letters? They're mailed. Well, get them back and check. Impossible. Well, can't you do something? No, I guess all we can do is just... Sit and wait and see what happens. Maybe mine was the only letter that was misplaced. Well, I guess that's all we can do. Wait and hope. Just wait, comrade. Hope is dead. You will publicly announce yourself as opposed to the election of Frederick Braxton and loudly declare you are for his opponent. Be obnoxious about it. Make speeches, write letters, talk to people about your political affiliation. Something's got to be done about this and right now. Since when has this become a communist organization? Don't raise your voice at me, my friend. I'm just as puzzled about all this as you are. What's going on in this office? Farrell, what do you know about this? Nothing. That's what I've been trying to tell everybody. I don't know a thing about this letter. But you know something about voting out a quorum, don't you, Farrell? And you know something about calling a meeting on Saturday night when few people are liable to attend. And you know something about a voice vote to support a very questionable candidate for public office. And now this, Farrell. If you're not a communist, you're certainly giving a good imitation of one. And I'm going to demand an investigation of this whole thing. Hi, hi. I have news for you, Herb. The party had a council of war last night, which didn't include you. Yeah, no kidding. And Farrell decided to place the blame on you for everything, including the ballot box. Well, and I always spoke so highly of him. But the party decided that you were too valuable a commie, so they're going to make Lucille the goat. The party overrode Farrell, huh? And I think you'll find the Taxpayers' Alliance will be more alert in the future. You must really have the goods on Farrell and Lucille. Yeah, we have her, and thanks to you. You know, you're a pretty valuable man to have when we run short of a quorum. <laughs> Come on, see me out.
to the daring action of a counter-spy, a Communist Party attempt to infiltrate and rule civic organizations through minority control was defeated and their undemocratic methods exposed. Next week, another story of communist activities from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, counter-spy, a man who for nine years posed as a member of the Communist Party. Thank you.